David Brewster here with another 3 for All, and this is 3 Jeff Beck Licks from 1974. And for those of you that don't know, uh, Jeff Beck is my all-time complete favorite guitarist. And he's been my favorite guitarist for a very long time, for decades. And I know I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, students and friends and you know, people I played in bands with, or girlfriends or whoever, and like, who's your favorite guitarist? And I know my answer has consistently confused people because I think, you know, people that kind of know me or barely know me, they think, all right, it's probably Van Halen or Ingve or Steve Vai or somebody like that, John Petrucci or Paul Gilbert. But uh, it's Jeff Beck, and it's been Jeff Beck since I was a teenager. And over here, um, there's the uh, vinyl copy of Blow by Blow, and I actually got that completely by accident. It was like serendipity or whatever. I was in a record store. I was about 12, maybe 13 years old, and I didn't have very much money. And I knew who Van Halen was, and that was really the main guitarist that I knew at that time. I was young. So I used to go into record stores, and at that time, vinyl was actually cheaper. Like, that was like the cheapest option, you know, in a record shop at that time, because they were phasing vinyl out. And, uh, you know, I remember I didn't have very much money, so I walked in, I did the big lap around the record store, and trying to find something new to listen to, but I didn't really know who was good, and I was young and kind of intimidated to ask. So I literally just looked for albums that had somebody holding a guitar, and that was a good sign. Like, okay, there's an album with a guitarist on the front or the back. You know, maybe this is a good one. And uh, that day, I bought Blow by Blow, and I also bought Steve Vai's Flexible, mainly just from the cover. You know, I saw it, and I thought, okay, I'm going to buy these. And they were, you know, cheaper or discounted, and I took them home. I put Flexible on. I was so confused. I was like, what in the world did I buy? And then I put Blow by Blow on. And obviously it was way before my time, you know, in the 70s. And uh, there was something about it, though, that resonated with me where I liked it. It was funky, raw, and I heard his guitar playing on there. And even though I didn't really understand what was going on or what that album, you know, actually meant, uh, I fell in love with it. And in 1999, I saw him in Indianapolis and I got to meet him after the show. And there's the ticket stub, and I brought that vinyl sleeve, and he signed it right there. I don't know if you can see that, but I met him briefly after the show, and Jennifer Batten, and a few other people in his band, and I was completely honored. You know, he walked up to me. I had really long hair at the time, but he walked right up to me, approaching his bus in the parking lot with his band. And I saw Jennifer Batten, you know, walking with him, and she's brilliant. I mean, she's marvelous. But... She was standing next to Jeff Beck, so I was kind of focused on him, and uh, he walked up, he shook my hand, I'm pretty sure my mouth was wide open, you know, shaking hands with a complete legend, and he signed that sleeve. When I started putting this lesson together, I wanted to reveal some different things that, that aren't necessarily common knowledge uh, for most people out there. I mean, Jeff Beck has been featured in guitar magazines. There are books about him, uh, the On the Run DVD, you know, kind of his video biography or whatever is brilliant. It's great. But uh, there are some, you know, like session appearances and albums that he appears on that a lot of people overlook or they forget. And some of those appearances, actually, he didn't, you know, use his actual name. He's kind of used like a fictitious name or a pen name on the album sleeve or the credits. So that's created, you know, some confusion too. But um, the image I just shared, you know, that had this kind of collage of all these different albums, he's been doing, you know, session work and collaborations and guest appearances on albums since the 1960s. And he still, you know, has kind of consistently uh, made those appearances. And it's always, you know, just amazing. But in 1974, he actually joined a group uh, called Up. UPP up. There's like an extra P in there. And I think the story goes, uh, he was working on, um, I think he was like recording with like Stevie Wonder or something. And he was working in the studio and he heard this band, you know, just jamming in this other part of the studio. And uh, the story is he just like barged in. The band stopped because it was Jeff Beck. And he was like, no, 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 keep playing. You know, that was awesome. That sounds great. And at the time, Jeff was really getting into funk and fusion, and he was listening, you know, to Miles Davis and Sly and the Family Stone, and, 
you know, James Brown and some of that stuff. And he really got into the groove and that funky uh, sound. And, you know, the collaboration he did with that band Up, he actually appears on two albums with them. And that was right on the cusp of him, you know, diving into albums like Wired and Blow by Blow and that kind of funk rock direction, which is so cool. And the licks in this lesson actually come from a live uh, TV appearance of Up, you know, with Chef Beck. Right, the first thing I'm going to share here is more of a trick and not really a lick, but on the classic live album uh, Jeff Beck with the Jan Hammer group live, before they play the song Freeway Jam, you hear Jeff and Jan basically making traffic noises. They're making car horn and truck horn, you know, honking noises. And I know the first time I heard that album and heard that track, I thought, that is so cool. You know, they're, they're honking, you know, between a guitar and a keyboard and kind of making this traffic, you know, sound. And uh, recently I was on a message board or a message group and people were talking about that track and trying to figure out how to replicate, you know, or duplicate that sound. And when I read the stream of comments and messages, I realized that they were really confused. They didn't know how he was doing it. And it's really simple. And you're not going to use a pick, uh, just kind of pluck it with your fingers. And Jeff, he's basically playing a major third right here, you know, a B and a D sharp. And he's plucking it, you know, very, uh, you know, kind of aggressively and kind of snapping the strings. So you literally want to pull the strings up, like toward the ceiling or away, you know, from the guitar, like this. And that's basically the sound of the, the honking horn. And then you hear Jan answer that with a higher third. And then you hear Jeff answer it again. And then Jan somewhere on the 10th fret there. And you hear this just back and forth honking. And uh, I know it's very simple, and it may not be something you want to whip out in a solo, but I love when guitarists do that, and they mimic the sounds of nature or machinery or other instruments. Really, really cool. The first lick from this uh, TV appearance from 1974, um, this is all going to feature licks that Jeff played uh, during this live performance of Get Down in the Dirt, which was on Up's first album. And if you're a fan of funk rock and that kind of just skanky, you know, 70s kind of uh, funk, really. Um, Jeff became obsessed with that, you know, around this time. And um, the performance is great. Jeff is shining, you know, like the sun. And the bass player from Up, um, Stephen Amazing, I think his real name was Steve Fields, but Stephen Amazing was amazing. I believe he's passed away. But phenomenal bass player, completely overlooked, off the radar. Most people don't even know his name. But Stephen Amazing was really good, and you can hear it, you know, like in the full version of this TV appearance, and you can also hear it on their album. But during this live performance, they're just jamming the song, because basically Get Down in the Dirt actually has vocals, and it's a different, uh, you know, song or different take of what they performed. During the TV appearance, they just do this instrumental jam loosely based around that song. And this first lick is the opening phrase uh, that Jeff's kind of playing with in the beginning. It's based around, uh, you know, C blues, C minor pentatonic. The song itself kind of floats around C9, so they're getting that real funky. You know, that kind of feel. Um, but the lick looks like this, and Jeff actually is using a pick. You can see in the footage, uh, this is before he made the jump to playing, you know, fingerstyle exclusively. This busy lick looks like this. And there you can see it's based around, you know, C minor pentatonic, C blues. And it's uh, it's definitely a busy, kind of dizzying lick too, because he's slurring and kind of mixing the notes around. But the main thing that you'll learn from studying someone uh, like Jeff Beck is, you know, it's not a shred thing, you know, thank God. It's a phrasing thing. It's feel and phrasing and note choices. And out of the Yardbirds kind of trio, you know, Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Jeff Beck, um, Clapton's kind of more the traditionalist, you know, you know, just a firm hand in the blues. And Jimmy Page, you know, definitely a huge blues fan. But then he also dabbled in, you know, like Indian music and some of these other sounds. And Jeff Beck's the same way, you know, for three guitarists that uh, played in the same band, you know, at different times, of course, Paige and Beck played at the Ar in the Yardbirds at the same time, briefly, but uh, they all three have very different styles. 
And out of those three, I personally prefer Jeff Beck. I'm a huge, you know, Jeff Beck fan. But I'm also a big Clapton and Jimmy Page fan too. But this lick, um, it's a great, you know, kind of warm up and just a busy little phrase you can throw out. So one more time there. <laughs> So we're coming out of the box. And he's also adding that D note right there. But he's blurring and grabbing the G flat, which is the flat five. He's also hitting it right there on that lower uh, part of the phrase too. Phrase. It's a cool lick. The next lick from this jam is another kind of C pentatonic, C blues uh, idea. And once again, he's doing these quick pull offs uh, on the G string. And it's phrased and arranged in a different way. He's also throwing in like a double stop bend, which is cool. Um, but it looks and sounds like this. And there you can see we're basically, you know, starting on the note G and then descending a three note pattern on the G string, G flat, F to E flat. Something like that. like phrases like that where it's it's blurring and kind of playing with your ear because you're hearing a lot of the same note but it's phrased and arranged in a really unique way which is Jeff Beck's you know specialty and I guess that's really the main thing you can learn uh, from really studying some of his licks and phrases is just the way he puts things together it's always a little different you know it's a little crooked or slanted or you know, he'll fret and target like an off note, but then find a way to make it work either by bending or sliding or using legato or something. And uh, just a very exciting guitarist, which I think is one of the main reasons why he's my favorite guitarist of all time, because you never know what he's going to play. And, you know, this is kind of an earlier, uh, you know, area of his career in the 70s. But uh, his playing, you know, had this biting kind of stinging kind of sound and then as he grew and progressed and kind of evolved as a musician of course he stopped using a pick and he kind of you know changed his entire technique and his entire you know musical voice in a way and he plays much differently now than how he did in the 70s and i love it all i love the modern jeff beck but I do really love the, the early Jeff Beck too, the 60s and 70s and 80s era. All right, the next lick from this jam, everything shifts to A minor seven and Jeff starts playing a solo over this just driving groove. And uh, he's starting you know, way up in the box, up around the 17th position out of A minor pentatonic. And this also reveals Jeff's kind of signature quirky bending and he's historically always found really interesting ways of taking, you know, standard licks and phrases from blues and rock players and then twists it, you know, mutates it into something quirky and a little bit different. And I think that's one of the exciting things about his style is, you know, you hear familiar sounds and phrases, but then you hear these bizarre and kind of, you know, out there uh, phrases too. And I really like that where he kind of spices it up with these uh, unusual licks, and it looks and sounds like this. And there you can see we're starting with a really typical blues rock lick. And then he starts doing these choke bends where he's bending a note and then silences it, and then frets a note and silences it too. So it's kind of staccato and very uh, percussive, like this. And there you can hear, you know, he started doing like a bend and release after he did the choke bending. But I really like that phrase, it's stinging, it kind of grabs your attention, and it's very, you know, Beckish or a Beckism.
bonus lick from this live performance. And during the performance, uh, you know, Jeff kind of kicks everything off and the spotlight's on him and some of the licks we just looked at you know, are performed. And then he kind of finishes, you know, that initial jam. And then the bassist I was talking about earlier, uh, Stephen Amazing uh, from Up, he plays like a 20 or 30 second bass solo and it's killer, just wicked, you know, uh, bass chops thrown out. He finishes the drummer, which I can't remember the drummer's name off the top of my head uh, from the group, but uh, he plays like a 20 or 30, you know, second solo on drums. And then the spotlight's back on Jeff Beck again. And when he comes back in, he's actually rolled the volume down on his guitar, so it's a little quieter. And he's playing this really kind of quirky, spastic little blues lick. And, uh, and there's a lot of feel and expression in this little phrase. So it's not really like a shred thing or something like that. I mean, Jeff Beck is never about shredding, um, thank God. He's more about phrasing, you know, and making these little musical statements and, and uh, very, you know, personal kind of fingerprint type of player. And this is a really cool lick. It looks like this. And we're back in C again, or that C9. And you can hear, uh, you know, it's quieter. He kind of rolled his volume down a little bit. And he starts it with this pull off to an open string. And then he starts, you know, this quirky blues bending uh, phrasing. <laughs> One more time there. And there you can see there's the you know, pull off to the open string and then he ends up targeting that C. And then he starts targeting notes on the B string um, and keeps going back to that C note on the G. And he's using like little half step bends and whole step bends. And he's flirting with the same kind of group of notes, but he's attacking those notes in different ways, which you know, it catches your ear, it catches your attention. Really cool and really expressive too to hear, you know, those you know, little handful of notes, but they're approached and attacked and performed in different ways. that's going to wrap this look at three Jeff Beck licks from 1974 and as I've you know stated into this camera about other artists and guitarists um, you know I featured on this channel this time I'm emphatically saying you know I'm a huge Jeff Beck fan you know I've read books about him I have a lot of his music um, you know his on the run uh, DVD that came out a few years ago is, is marvelous you know, it's a great you know video documentary and biography you know about Jeff Beck highly recommend that and then just interviews, you know, like in Guitar Player Magazine and some other places too, just reading, you know, his thoughts and ideas about music have always been inspiring and kind of eye-opening and just really unique, you know, where it's like, okay, this guy has consistently, you know, been different. He's been on a different path and he's kind of pushed himself in so many different ways with his music and his guitar playing. And uh, it's thrilling, you know, to see somebody like that and, and really try to soak up some of that magic. Uh, behind the music. So uh, anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content material. Thank you.